Welcome to Orify and the exciting world of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which has captivated millions of players around the world. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is a first-person shooter video game developed by Infinity Ward and published by Activision. It is the fourth installment in the Call of Duty series and was released in November 2007 for PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. The game is set during a fictional conflict between global powers. However, I will tell you about all this later. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a few comments to let me know what you think. And for those who want to support me and my content there are links in the description where you can throw a wad of money at me. Thank you all for your support. Make yourself comfortable, brew what you like, and we're finally getting started. The game starts with a cut scene of the British SAS divided into good and bad. From the good, the civil war in Russia, where 15,000 nuclear warheads are at stake, and Khalid al-Assad, the second most powerful man in the Middle East, wants to be the first one currently being monitored by intelligence. But the bad news is a newcomer to the team, under the call sign Soap, is already undergoing some training at the moment. Soap is one of the main characters in the game. After the shooting range, we head to Captain Price, one of the most famous characters in the Call of Duty series. What the hell kind of name is Soap, eh? How'd a Muppet like you pass selection? He sends Soup to pass the obstacle course, the result of which will show the recommended level of difficulty for the player. Having decided on the desired level of penetration, Captain Price announces the upcoming departure for the operation. It is necessary to find a package on board the terrorist ship in the Bering Strait. Under the cover of night, the fighters parachute from a helicopter and clean the vessel centimeter by centimeter until they stumble upon a container in the hold, inside of which lies the parcel they need. It turns out to be a box with signs of radiation danger. We pick up the wables from there and hurry to leave the ship as soon as possible, as we are informed that two unknown air targets are approaching. Before we could run even 10 meters, the team was faced with a new problem. Price helps soup up, and the squad rushes to the extraction point, trying to make it before the ship turns into a submarine. Jumping into the helicopter, Soup begins to slide off, but Captain Price quickly catches the newcomer, pulling him in so that he can watch the ship descend into the depths of the sea. This completes the operation, and the players are transferred to the Middle East, to watch the last minutes of the life of the local president Al-Falani, who is getting rid of the previously mentioned Khaled al-Assad on the air. It all starts with the skillful packing of the president into the car so that he can take one last look at what his decisions and power have led to. The driver is an unnamed fighter, but next to him sits a character who seems to have escaped from the 90s. But about him, already by tradition, will be a little later. The president is being driven through the streets of the city immersed in chaos and devastation. Immediately, we can hear how the head of the local rebels, Khaled al-Assad, is pushing not the most pleasant speech, accusing the president in every possible way of devastation around and collusion with Western countries. However, we still have not long to listen to him, because we arrived at the place where the president was thrown out of the car and dragged to the pole. Here we can see a strange bald man without an arm, who gives Khaled Desert Eagle. The barrel is almost thrust into the throat of the president, and Khaled becomes the first person in terms of influence in the Middle East. Now, the players are once again transported to Captain Price's squad, which has gone to the Caucasus to rescue Nikolai. Nikolai, an informant for the British intelligence services, it was he who reported the package on the previously sunken ship. However, the separatists have declassified it, and are now holding it in a local village. Price's detachment makes its way to the indicated place, on the approach to which, they meet with a detachment of loyalists, led by Sergeant Komarav. After a little hello, Price tries to find out where Nikolai is, but Komarab does not answer questions and points out that the separatists are terrorizing the valley, getting rid of civilians, and asks for help with cleaning up the village. Having taken a sniper position, the SAS fighters help the loyalists clear the villages at the beginning, after which they head to the next point, where Gaz still can't stand it, and begins to interrogate Komarav to find out where the prisoner is and what is happening to him. Under the threat of life, the detachment receives the necessary information and goes to the house on the edge of the village, where Gaz turns off the light and we need, with the help of night vision devices and our skills, to clear the building. In the farthest room, the squad finds Nikolai and escorts him to the extraction point. Flying away by helicopter, 
Nikolai learns with us that in a few hours, the American army will begin to storm the city, where they will have to capture Al-Assad, to which Nikolai replies that the dictator cannot be taken alive. Players are transferred again, this time for the previously mentioned operation to capture the separatists. We will observe everything that happens through the eyes of the American Marine Paul Jackson. Having landed, the detachment heads to the building where Al-Assad is supposed to be, but he is not there, and we are told that he is broadcasting from a TV station. The detachment goes there, where it blows up the door, and, spreading lead to the right and left, gets into the right room of the television studio. But even here we fail, because there is no Al-Assad here, and the previously mentioned live broadcast is just a recording. The commander of the detachment, Lieutenant Vasquez, reports information about the capture of the television studio and receives an order, along with his fighters to go to the place where the tank was stuck in the swamp. The task is extremely simple to get to the specified place, and clear the territory from the enemy. Along the way, laying a small gift of democracy to the dude on the anti-aircraft gun, thanks to which we can call a squad of technicians to fix the tank. But it will take a long time, so Vasquez commands to take up defensive positions. Meanwhile, the players are transferred to Captain Price's detachment, which does not have time to evacuate Nikolai, because an explosive thing flies into the helicopter. After such an unexpected close encounter, the helicopter crashes, leaving Nikolai, Captain Price, Soap, and Gaz alive. But here the squad is lucky because an AC-130 flew to their aid. It remains only to get to the evacuation point, where the detachment is sent, encountering several patrols along the way and a helicopter, which Soap successfully shoots down with the stinger. And then the AC-130 flies up to help, and the players are transferred to the skin of an unnamed shooter from the same aircraft to provide fire support for the squad on the way to the evacuation point. Having dealt with a bunch of opponents and provided Price's detachment with a safe retreat, the players are transferred back to the Marine Hall, where the technicians have already pulled the tank out of the swamp and now it is ready to please the terrorists with its large and long barrel, paving the way for retreat. Because the marines who have made their way to the presidential palace, they report that al-Assad is in the capital, and in this very palace they find a nuclear explosive device. The player sits behind a grenade launcher placed on the side of the helicopter, which destroys more separatist crowds. However, not everything is so simple. The helicopter accompanying us is shot down, and the detachment decides, under the threat of not being able to evacuate before the explosion, will land and pick up the still alive pilot. After a successful evacuation, the squad throws a wounded soldier into a turntable and leaves the combat zone. And then an explosion occurs, after which, helicopters are in distress. The detachment almost completely dies, except for our main character. Which of the last forces is selected from the remains of the helicopter, so that players can see the consequences firsthand? Then he dies too. On this, the mission to destroy Al-Assad must be completed, but this bastard turns out to be alive because he was not at all in the Middle East. Nikolai reports that all this time he sipped cocktails at his secret headquarters in Azerbaijan. Price's detachment goes there, where it meets with Komarav's group, and together with them, they clean the village. As a result, having reached the barn, where Captain Price throws a flash drive, Solo deals with two guards and hastily proceeds to interrogation. However, he does not learn any information from Al-Assad. Suddenly, the terrorist receives a call on the phone, from where Price finds out that the main one in this whole nuclear mess is the same bald man without an arm named Imran Sakafiv. After that, Price gets rid of Al-Assad, giving him almost 15 grams of lead. Recognizing the real villain, the game takes us back 15 years to when Price was still a lieutenant. At that moment, he did all sorts of dirty work, one of which was the elimination of the same Zakafiv, who, on the territory of the Cornabil Exclusion Zone, or rather in Pripyat, tried to sell uranium rods from the reactor to create nuclear weapons. At that moment, Price and Captain McMillan, bypassing terrorist patrols, head into the city, to an already prepared sniper position. On the spot, Price picks up a 50 caliber bullet. Having picked up the M82, Price, along with McMillan, observes the meeting of terrorists and, after approving the shot, hits the target. However, Price fails to eliminate Zakafiv. The bullet hits the villain's hand, after which Price destroys the helicopter, and the squad hastily leaves the position, heading for the extraction point. Along the way, knocking down another winged one, which, falling, releases several missiles and, already on the ground, 
wounds Macmillan's leg with a blade. Now Price needs to drag the captain on himself to the point of evacuation. Having reached the Ferris wheel, we put Macmillan in a comfortable position and arrange several explosive gifts, waiting for the helicopter, which was not in a hurry. Therefore, the detachment has to get rid of another pack of soldiers. And as usual, we successfully flew away from the mission, this time, leaving behind mountains of bodies and a piece of Macmillan's leg. The game takes us to the present, where Price's detachment holds the defense in the village where Al-Assad previously took refuge. Zakafiv's fighters rush to help the already deceased Al-Assad, but Price's detachment mines the hills and deftly gets rid of several waves of opponents, after which the helicopter takes the detachment. Now, Price has the plan to get Zakafiv, who, after the disappointing news, lay low. We need to get Zakafiv's son, the same dude in a trendy suit, who also turns out to be the leader of the separatists in the south of Russia. Detachments of Price, Komarav, and the US Marine Corps are sent to the point where, having got rid of the guards at the checkpoint, they take a wait and see position. Before that, Having changed into the uniform of the guards who were previously standing here, Komarav's fighters start talking to people in the column, diverting attention, and everyone else starts handing out lead gifts, while not touching the car with the kid, and this juvenile moron tries to leave as if in an afterburner, but crashes into a tower after which he goes on the run. But he was not destined to go far, and we surrounded him on the roof of one of the buildings. Not having time to learn anything, the little one sends his brains for a walk. After the death of his son, Zakafiv presents an ultimatum to the West. If their troops do not immediately leave Russian territory, Zakafiv will use nuclear weapons. Zakafiv himself is based in Altai, where nuclear warheads are also stored. SAS fighters, along with the Americans, are sent to Altai to capture this base taking control of nuclear missiles. Having landed, Price's detachment catches the beacon signal of one of the Americans, Staff Sergeant Griggs, who landed unsuccessfully and was captured by militants. And since he has all the explosives he needs, Price has to go after him, clearing the territory from the warriors. Having freed the fighter, they all head towards the base together, near which, with the help of explosives, they undermine a power line pole so that another group could enter the base a little easier. But already on the way to the launch center, the detachment sees the launch of two nuclear gifts, receiving an additional task to neutralize the missiles before they arrive. Having cleared the territory of the base from disgruntled separatists, we go down the cables to one of the missile silos. Already inside, the command gives Price the neutralization codes, adding that there is very little time. While we are trying to break through the crowds of opponents, the launch of the remaining missiles begins. However, we still manage to infiltrate the control center and enter codes that destroy missiles while still in the air. Immediately, we receive information that Zakafiv has thrown all his strength at us. And since Price is not stupid, he orders the detachment to pack up and quickly dump away, capturing several cars, in which we are trying to get to the evacuation point, shooting back from some evil soldiers along the way. However, everything did not go exactly according to plan, because a helicopter with Sakafi flew behind us, which undermined the bridge right in front of us, thereby stopping the convo. The detachment has only the last strength to shoot back at the separatists. In the end, almost losing consciousness, Soup sees Zakafi, accompanied by two terrorists, enter the bridge and get rid of the surviving SAS fighters and marines, and then Komarav's helicopters suddenly fly up, which undermines Zakafi's turntable. At this moment, Price throws his gun at us, and we get to take into account the execution of the sentence giving the lead to Zakafiv and his guards. Komarav rescues Soup and the helicopter transports him to the hospital. The last thing Soup sees before losing consciousness, Price is lying still, and the medic is giving him artificial respiration. At this point, Call of Duty Modern Warfare ends. There is, of course, an epilogue, but about it very briefly. We are for an unnamed fighter in the detachment to save some important person from the hands of terrorists on board the aircraft. One of us straps the rescued hostage to him, and we jump out of the plane, while the plane, in which one of the dead passengers had a bomb, explodes in the air. Now that's all for sure. I don't even know what to say. These were my first two playthroughs of this game. You heard it right for the first time I launched this game literally two to three weeks ago. And it was quite an interesting and unexpected experience. It's nice to play a project where the quality and richness of the plot were put in the first place. Especially when compared to new Ubisoft games. I want to note the complexity of this game. Passing on the maximum difficulty my ass managed to overcome the speed of sound several times. Especially in the mission with the storming of the TV studio. There. 
The only option to survive was to take a sniper rifle and lean out in millimeters so as not to immediately catch the line. So with all this, it was also necessary to have time to throw the grenades back. Oh well, today we have a video only on the plot, so I'm done. But surely no one has watched it until this moment. I remind you that for those who want to support me with a penny in the description there is a link to the donation. Thank you all for the likes, comments, and subscriptions with the squeeze bell. I'll be back to you soon with a new game and a new plot. Good luck.